let's Thank present you. the first session with Dr. Surna Ravin Prabhu, CEO of Kuvan Smart Systems and Services Private Limited, Chennai. He did his bachelor's degree from Government College of Technology in the year 1992 and his doctorate of philosophy from UNSW, Australia in the year 2006. He worked as a senior engineer in Bharat Electronics for four years and as a system engineer in Aerospace System Private Limited for about three years. He played a major role in building up a team from scratch, customer negotiations, and business proposals. He guided, trained, and organized workshop for the team members on GNSS, sensors, statistical algorithms, and NFC. He has five core patents in navigation and communication fields, and has published about 50 journal articles. Welcome, you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I also would like to say. Uh, a few words about the today uh, speaker, uh, Professor Dr. Sundar Dharwagu, uh, Professor of CAT, Electronics and Communication Department. And uh, so he has uh, uh, serving the society through his uh, startup, uh, Home Systems. And he is the CEO of the Home Systems. And uh, so he is uh, motivating your students in the innovation and uh, uh, and research. So thank you so much, sir, for accepting your request. And please, you can uh, go on with your session, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the introduction. It is a privilege to be part of this FDP. And I thank the management and the ACT for uh, giving the opportunity to share our uh, views. Because ours is a company which specializes in industry IoT. And uh, we have a real-time uh, real experience having deployed our solutions in right from micro enterprises to Fortune 500 companies across the globe. Mm -hmm. So this is experience which we are, I am going to bring into this platform today, and uh, please feel free to interact with us. So straight away, uh, I'll get into the presentation. So is the screen visible? Yeah, visible, sir. Please, you can go watch. Yeah. So today I'm going to talk about uh, on IoT and artificial intelligence in manufacturing. As uh, Dr. Oh. Uh, Ramesh and uh, Dr. Ravi and uh, were mentioning, the future belongs to automation. We would like to monitor everything right from our mobile, uh, mobile phones. Say, for example, I want to monitor a shop floor, want to monitor the number of people working in office today in my absence. So all these informations I want to capture right from my mobile, want to monitor as well. I also would like to control the devices or control the information that uh, seamlessly gets uh, uh, transferred from the from the industries to my mobile or web application. And this is what the future uh, industries are looking at. It is not just about the, it is not just about the process automation, but increasingly industries are looking at shop floor automations as well. Suppose if there are a lot of equipment in the uh, in the industries, they would like to get the information from the in the, from the shop floors and stream them and able to monitor the information in real time uh, using a web or mobile applications. And this is where the intelligence also comes. The intelligence when we talk about uh, in industry automation, primarily we are looking at relationships between the various processors, the equipment, and the human resources. Prior to industry four, people were looking at everything in silos. Suppose if I am working on a process, say for example, an enterprise process, the ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning uh, uh, Solution. What I look primarily is from the raw materials. Good morning, sir. So somebody's phone is uh, on. They can uh, put it in mute. Um, so industry is, uh, basically looks at the establishing the relationship as part of the industry automation or industry four. That is where the intelligence comes. Prior to industry four, it used to be like in silos. The process is separate. The example, the ERP, for example, the enterprise resource planning system, it captures from the raw material to the finished goods conversion process with the inventory management. That is a separate process. I look at the equipment as a separate process. I capture information from CNC machines, VMC machines, lathes, cutters, and so forth. I capture them separately. And the human resource, for example, the attendance management system, I capture them separately. There's absolutely no relationship between these three. 
if there is any productivity uh, decrease in my entire uh, organization level productivity it is very difficult to lay hands on which exact uh, source was a contribution to this uh, uh, the productivity decline is it because of the process uh, 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 process not correct or is it because of the machines not operating correctly or is it because of the humans uh, not working efficiently it is very difficult to establish because the relationships are not established and this is what precisely the industry four talks about established relationship between all these three elements bring out intelligence in terms of information that would be uh, that would be useful for the management to make quicker decisions in today's presentation we are going to see how iot has impacted the industry four by connecting a various uh, seemingly different elements like a shop floors process and uh, human resources and along with that the artificial intelligence so what sort of intelligence can we leverage from this uh, connected systems this is what we are going to see today as part of the industry four uh, applications if you cut on the left circle there is ot that is operation technology and on the right side is the information technology and both of them uh, converge together to provide the iot solutions so it primarily focuses on the cloud the infrastructure setup the uh, software applications the data applications it does not deal anything to, uh, with the hardware like for, for example the sensors the communication wireless communication or wired communication the gateways so it does not deal with any of these things so what the industries and academic institutions across the globe have realized that is once the ot and it are integrated there is a far more value that can be achieved than by using this uh, individual it's and ot's so by combining this operation technology with information technology to bring under the umbrella of iot a lot of value additions have been achieved they have been demonstrated across globally that a lot more value can be achieved by integrating the ot and it and this is what precisely industry automation talks about we look at the parlance of industry 4 as cyber physical systems which means the devices the physical devices get connected to the internet that is what iot in essence talks about every information you push it to the internet which can be accessed by anywhere across i am not limited uh, no any more uh, uh, with the geog geographic limitations i can access the information from virtually from anywhere so get all the information any physical devices from across and then put them in the server do complete computations in the server uh, ai machine learning or data processing and then stream this process data to the web and mobile application which again can be accessed from anywhere i am not constrained to any geographical boundaries i can access the if i am authorized to access the information i can uh, access it from anywhere across and this is what the uh, this is what the uh, bottom line of the industry automation get complete information from physical devices from virtual applications to the uh, to the uh, internet or to the server the cloud server or proprietary servers and process all the data in the server and then stream them to all the authorized people to have them access the data for making a decisions so as we see msmes are growing segment in india primarily if you look at it the second biggest industry vertical is the msme industries the micro small and medium enterprises they are the hubs for the economic growth the job creations for example the job creations and technological innovations industries are working with a lot of technological innovations with the advent of semiconductor evolutions wireless communications like a 5g evolving at a rapid pace which is uh, likely to be implemented in this year in uh, at the first beta level so we can see that lot of data tra transfers would be taking place right from your house onwards even within your own home you see that at least closer to like a 10 to 15 devices get connected to the internet it could be your television it could be your uh, mobile devices laptops computers everything gets connected to the internet and you will be able to control the devices using your mobile devices as well you don't have to have a remote separate remotes for tv the acs fridges like that one single remote application uh, mobile application would do to control all these devices that is the power of internet and uh, the msme industries and the industries are leveraging this power of internet to be to monitor and control the devices and uh, almost every industry india by india if you look at it they have closer to like a 90 million msme industries and almost every industry right from micro enterprise is looking at automating their uh, uh, platforms automating their industries we may think what what a micro enterprise say for example i set up a shop floor within a house like a cottage industry 
if you look at ambattur and uh, many other industry belts there will be many industries set up in a very very small uh, uh, houses also so we we might be thinking that too. so what is that that these industries can talk about uh, industry for technologies they actually may not be talking on industry for they don't know what is ai they don't know what is iot big data but what they want is can i access my machine from my mobile phone so what they imply by this is they are looking at industry for technologies that can be imparted to their industries to gain information so that irrespective of their presence within the office they'll be able to take quicker decisions and it's not confined to just micro or small and medium enterprises but every fortune 500 industry is looking at automation it also is apply, applies to defense and space industries also because in defense and space again we have a lot of i mean a very, very massive manufacturing and production plants which they are automating using the iot technologies or industry 4 technologies which means we see a enormous growth for the industry 4 skills this is a heterogeneous system unlike many of the contemporary uh, systems say for example in terms of communication i have a 5g 4g 3g and so many other wireless technologies they are all like a, a separate technologies a homogeneous systems but what iot looks at is more from a heterogeneous perspective the crux of the entire industry 4 is do we understand the problem statement once we understand the problem statement we are not confined to any one single discipline the solution comes from an integration of uh, hardware mechanical uh, mechanical elements uh, embedded elements communication elements ele electrical elements as well as the computer applications so all of them put together is what a solution to a given problem and these are the skills that are sought after from many industries across the globe so it is not that it would not suffice that i come from a computer science background so i understand only the computer science like a programming it could be a mobile programming or web programming or a server side programming industries are not looking at such siloed skills industries are looking at the, the, our ability to understand the entire problem it could be a hardware software networking mechanical uh, element integration it is looking at our holistic knowledge that can be imparted to provide solutions to the industries and these are the skills that are uh, uh, are required by the industries and this is what the trend going to be next uh, 10 to 15 years if you look at a gartner's hype chart we see that the most sort of the skills for the next 5 to 10 years are iot data ai skills augmented reality and virtual reality these are the skills uh, projected by the global uh, marketing uh, reports so when we talk about industry automation what we essentially mean is every uh, signals and every information is digitized so the moment your data are digitized either they can come from a electrical sensor or an electronic sensor or from any mechanical devices so once the data are digitized then this digitized data are processed first within a embedded uh, processor because we do not want to send the complete data to the server without doing a pre-processing because the moment we transfer the raw data to the cloud server we might uh, uh, choke the uh, complete communication communication bandwidth so the first level would be like a, at the embedded level itself we first do the processing and the process data is the one that will be we will be sending to this server the processor embedded processor basically decide, decides whether to send this process data to the server or not in many a cases we see that the data could have a outliers this outliers there is no point in sending to the back end because there is no absolute utility of this outlier data so the first level intelligence is important at the physical layer itself at the source level. And then the embedded processor makes a first level decision as to whether to stream this data or not. Once it decides, okay, then we stream the data, it can be streamed to the proprietary servers or the cloud servers where data gets stored first, then it gets processed by our analytical platforms. And then the processed information is streamed to the web and mobile applications. Which means when we look at the industry automation, we primarily look from end to end right from sensors onwards which get fitted onto a, a machinery machinery and equipment to the backend web and mobile applications we see a complete uh, chain of elements getting integrated in a heterogeneous manner and the future is all about data everything gets digitized every information you will see as a data so it is as best that irrespective of the discipline we come from we understand this nitty gritty is uh, first because even it could be a mechanical industry but they look at automation Look at automation in the sense, I might want to understand the efficiency of my CNC or VMC machines. I want to understand what time the machine was on, what time the machine was off, 
what was the power consumption during the time the machine was on and these are some of the critical parameters that will be required by the management to make an optimal decisions because next to uh, one of the uh, important uh, uh, elements in terms of the uh, the uh, investments for the company is the first is the uh, it could be like a working capital which involves the salaries or wages to the employees and second comes the power the uh, power consumption by the uh, industry so the moment we optimize these two the industries can see a very big productivity improvement and these are the key factors that every industry would be looking at it how do i optimize my human resources how do i make them uh, work efficiently the second is how do i optimize my power the power to the various equipment various devices and uh, the uh, the business facilities so from this perspective we look at it as much information we capture from for these two uh, parameters like a human resources and power there's a uh, huge potential for a productivity improvement uh, uh, for the industries as uh, ramesh sir was uh, putting i mean the industry revolution started in the earlier 18th century now we are in the 21st century in fourth industrial revolution which primarily talks about cyber physical systems what we mean by this is uh, there's an increasing convergence from the physical world to the uh, back end virtual world what we see is in, in the physical form a shop floor or a machine we want to see the same machine in a three dimensional virtual uh, ui which can give me the same look and same look and feel as what i experience in the physical world so for example i switch on the motor right now in my shop floor if i can see the motor spinning in my uh, computer or in my mobile device then it gives me a very good user experience in terms of understanding the performance of the machine and also it gives me a very good user experience user experience is something what we will be increasingly talking about in terms of industry four applications it could be an erp enterprise resource planning system it could be a manufacturing execution system software it could be augmented reality application what essentially people talk about is the ux not the ui ui is the fields that capture the information suppose for example a motor has some 10 different parameters like input power supply output uh, rpm and uh, the uh, some other factors like uh, some 6 to 8 different parameters getting these parameters printing them on a ui screen is uh, one factor but what increasingly industries are looking at what is the user experience i get by using your application which means they are looking something beyond the raw data that we show up in the applications the experience say for example the motor i switch on at in a shop floor if i can see a spinning motor in my uh, web or mobile application that it gives me relatively a better experience than just the ui and suppose if the motor is spinning at say for example 1300 to 1400 rpm if a uh, corresponding uh, increase in the speed in the virtual application if i can see for the motor then it gives me much much better experience the motor is switched off in the shop floor the motor gets switched off in the virtual screen and this is what industries are looking at uh, in terms of the user experience we also call this as a digital twins digital twin is nothing but the shop floor getting replicated on the virtual uh, uh, virtual application it could be a web application it could be a mobile application and uh, most of the cyber physical systems use the cloud server as one of the mediums to store the data and to process the data gone are the days when uh, industries used to work on a proprietary servers i have my own for my company i have my own server i give access to the limited access uh, to the suppliers and customers outside who will be given access to the applications the challenge with this is it requires a lot of uh, lot of resources in terms of the human resources in terms of 24 by 7 power uninterrupted power air conditioning so if i look at my operating expenses to maintain a server it is very very huge it doesn't justify the return on investment for micro small and medium enterprises so almost all these industries are move, moving towards a cloud infrastructure where the infrastructure is set up for you all you need to do is subscribe for a certain certain size of memory and then you make use of the already established infrastructure just like as internet is already established infrastructure what we are trying to make use of it similarly the cloud infrastructure is again a medium which is already established by several service providers all when it is a monthly subscription or annual subscription at, uh, then get a chunk of your memory and then make use of it without having to have any resources at you are in this justifies the cost say for example i mean it is a highly i mean ballpark figure what i am saying it could also result in a 10x or 20x savings in your total budgeting or operating expenses by adopting the cloud technology 
So AI, artificial intelligence, AR, augmented reality, virtual reality, IoT are going to be the buzzwords in all the future industry automations. Some of the key technologies that we'd be hearing when we when we uh, listen to all the industry automations or when you visit industries working on industry automation is this technology, IoT, the Internet of Things. Why Internet of Things? We are uh, now we are in the era of automation and internet. Every physical devices, uh, it could be at home, it could be your office, it could be anywhere, even the outside environment is going to get connected to the internet. It is roughly estimated that in the next three or four years, 200 billion devices are going to get connected to the internet, which means virtually I have every device connected to the internet. It will be secured. And this is one of the criteria by which your businesses can make or break. Unless your data are secured, trust, trust is provided to your end customers and suppliers that your data cannot be breached by anybody. Otherwise, your business uh, will, uh, will go for a toss. So every device it gets connected to the internet by virtue of which I can monitor their data, what is happening, I can control the uh, devices. Say, for example, as a smart home application, I can connect all my fans, lights, fridges, AC, um, the geezers, every device, everything can be connected connected to the internet i'll get all these devices mapped to my mobile phone so i open my mobile smart home application and then i can control i can monitor whether my fan is on if i'm not at home if my fan is on if i see that i can switch off my fan right from my any place where i am and this is the part of the automation and these are the technologies that are being used in the industries as well because industries comprises a machinery it is basically about machinery even the trading industries you look at them they have a lot of processes in place and they want to capture the information in the back end. So every process and every device are going to be connected to the internet. And uh, the moment you see that every device or process are connected to the internet, the data storage becomes all the more essential. It is not just the real time data, but it is also the historic data that becomes very important. If not for the home, home uh, users, uh, for the industry users, the historic data becomes very important. It, it would not suffice that I have only the three months data. I might be looking at storing about uh, three to five years of data by which I make a lot of optimizations to my business models, understand the trends and patterns that has evolved over a period of time, and I make a judicious decisions based on all this historic data. So as much value I give to my real-time data, the historic data also plays a much bigger role, primarily because one is I get the trends and analysis how my business is evolving. Second is if I want to make any predictions, I need a historic data to make predictions. So big data and internet are going to be extremely powerful and the internet is evolving from IPv4 networks to IPv6 network. And the cloud server is uh, becoming a de facto standard uh, for many micro, small and medium enterprises, the MSME industries. Nobody is going for the proprietary servers. Even those who have a proprietary servers are moving to the cloud server applications. And only thing they want to be ensured is that their data are uh, privately protected. Privacy is ensured and security is ensured. So we have to ensure that every uh, byte of data is stored in a very, very secure and uh, private manner so that the data uh, from for our clients are given access only to the authorized uh, per personnel. And communication technologies, we are moving from a traditional 2G and GSM technologies to 3G, 4G, and 5G. In about a year or two, we'll see that every household will have a 5G communication system. Every industry will have a 5G communication. The power of 5G is that the bandwidth supported are like a 1 gigabit per second to 10 gigabit per second, which means I can have a hundreds of devices in my shop floor and uh, stream them in real time to this server. So we are looking at a huge bandwidth from 5G, which can support, say, for example, we work on a uh, Smart, uh, smart city applications, smart industry applications, or smart campuses, or smart agriculture applications. Data are going to the real time data uh, transferring to the server are going to be very, very critical. So 5G will immensely support uh, this uh, future requirements. And augmented reality has already made inroads into many industries now. They are using it for either training purposes or diagnostic purposes. Training purposes, suppose if I recruit a group of people, if they need to be trained uh, uh, on hands in the shop floors, it is going to cut down the productive productivity of uh, the shop floor. So what industries are looking at is, uh, they are looking at uh, creating a virtual or uh, augmented environments where the new recruits or uh, 
uh, the um, the fresh recruits can work on the 3D models of the devices what they intend to operate in the shop floors. So which means I'll have a lot of sensors deployed within the equipment which I need to model using augmented reality or virtual reality. I'll stream the complete information from these devices to the virtual screen where 3D models will be running. And the, uh, the recruits can uh, work on these models as if they work on the real devices. So we have created a lot of AR and VR models for the industries. And AI, AI is going to be the key in all uh, industry, applic industry four applications. Even if I talk about a small sensor, like a temperature sensor, I am looking not just about the raw data, but the intelligence what I can give from the sensor to the backend. Gone are the days when people used to look at, OK, now I have a temperature sensors deployed in my office. Then I will stream them to the cloud. And uh, I using a web or mobile application, I will monitor in real time. There's absolutely no value. Say, for example, I set the room temperature of my office at 25 degrees Celsius. If my temperatures are going to be almost consistent throughout the day, then there's no point, one, in having the data with me. The second is uh, the monitoring the data because the temperature is more or less constant. So what the AI systems do is at the sensors level only it will decide if the measurements, unless they go beyond a certain threshold, they will not even stream the data to the back end. And if the measurements go beyond a certain threshold, an SMS as an alert will be sent to the uh, 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 authorize the person so that they will take a quicker remedial measures. So which means I don't need to be glued onto my screen to mo keep monitoring what is actually happening uh, in real time. The moment any outlier happens or any measurements go beyond our thresholds and I'll automatically be triggered using a SMS or a mobile alerts by which I can immediately alert the uh, concerned personnel. So this is the power of artificial intelligence is not only at the uh, hardware level, I, this is also extensively implemented at the back end in the server cloud server applications. Once the data are stored, then this stored data are then processed uh, uh, by the AI algorithms. It will be a machine learning or a deep learning algorithms. And then the output of this is sent to the web or mobile application in terms of reports and dashboards. So every web and mobile application in future, you will see that reports and dashboards are going to be a uh, uh, the basic requirements for the management particularly. So the industry four is nothing but a heterogeneous system comprising of sensors, embedded technologies, the human resources, cloud server, wireless communication, web and mobile platforms, and uh, connecting a various equipment. There are a couple of technologies. One is a greenfield technology. Some of the uh, modern day equipment come with already all the intelligences that we are talking about. But uh, what the real time trends we see is Many of the industries have already uh, uh, have equipment with them, which are in place for the past 20 or 30 years. So they do not want to uh, throw away this equipment and go for new ones because the investment of this is extremely high. So what they do is they go for retrofitting of these uh, sensors and the intelligence onto the existing machinery. And the moment these sensors and the uh, wireless technologies are embedded onto the machine, then this brownfield, what we call as a retrofitting of the embedded intelligence is called as a brownfield technologies. So once this embedded intelligence is integrated onto the machines, we call them or they become equivalent to the greenfield technologies. So then we start uh, streaming the data from this machinery to the backend and do the complete processing. And in terms of the wireless technologies, we see a lot of evolutions have been happening, primarily targeting the industry four applications. One such technology is a long range communication. So for example, I have uh, put some of my electrical equipment or electronic equipment in a remote places where the humans or the people will not be uh, frequently visiting those places. But I want to monitor in real time the status of those equipment. We do not need a huge amount of bandwidth. Every 30 minutes, I want a sample as to whether this uh, equipment is working correctly or not. So how do I go about it? If I go for any existing 3G, 4G applications, it requires a battery power. It requires a huge battery power, So which means I need to have a AC power connected always to my wireless devices. So this LoRa and six slow pan such technologies, they are very, very uh, powerful in terms of battery conservation. And they also can transmit data to distances uh, uh, like something like uh, five kilometers to 10 kilometers distances with the batteries lasting for three to five years, which means along with the equipment, I go and integrate this LoRa or six slow pan technologies. I can uh, rest be assured for the next uh, approximately three to five years. My, I will get the streaming data from these devices. 
any problem happens with my electrical devices i instantly get to understand that there is something that has happened and i can uh, deploy my service engineer to that particular lo location so this is how the heterogeneous systems are going to bring up value added services to the future industries and future applications we are not looking at uh, uh, services in a siloed manner we are looking at it in a more integrated manner and that is the power of the cyber physical or industry for uh, applications we see every device is going to get connected it could be a thing it could be a service it could be a process they get connected under the umbrella of heterogeneous systems and all this information will be shared on to the web and mobile platforms it could be a real time streaming data coming from a cnc equipment or a vmc equipment but still this can be streamed to the web and mobile applications for example you can see the power of uh, the aggregator application something like a uh, uber ola and uh, zomato such applications the power lies not in providing a mobile applications but in bringing out various the business process the uh, supply chain process onto a single framework and this is what aggregator uh, platforms or aggregator service providers are looking at so what is the value i can give to my end customer by integrating various services onto a single platform so which means i can go to a one single mobile application i can access my entire business suppose say for example as a user i am interested in uh, availing uh, taxi services or some eatery services then i can access this information and get it uh, get it delivered to my residents uh, uh, in a very pre defined manner and uh, with a high level of accuracy and these are going to be the trends of the future the aggregator model even applies to industries as well the supply chain industries primarily they also look at uh, aggregator models where the complete set of their supply chain industries get integrated on to a single mobile application or a web application so primarily when we talk about industry 4 or iot that is the uh, iot is the basis for the industry 4 technologies we categorize them in terms of things or services or data in some cases like a process we talk uh, we look at iot as uh, from purely from the data perspective i get the data from a process the process could be a raw material to finish good conversion in an industry which integrates the inventory the packaging the delivery all inclusive it looks primarily from the data perspective so we get the data from this i store the data i authorize some people to access the data and to see in real time what is happening to my process whether the process is going uh, is going ahead as planned and scheduled i also look from the services perspective in terms of like a uber ola models that i have said they look purely the industry four from the services perspective and many of the shop floors look at the industry four automation or iot from the things perspective where every machine or every equipment get connected uh, to the internet using a uh, wired and wireless technologies so this is how the uh, iot or industry four are going to be categorized for all industries and uh, for example the asset tracking systems many of the uh, top companies from a uh, medium enterprises on to the bigger enterprise even you look at uh, amazon flipkart such industries where they have a huge uh, warehouses a massive warehouses the optimal way of the complete supply chain right from the order placement by the customer to the end delivery to the customer takes place through a lot of op uh, automation process so every asset or every inventory item is uh, fixed with the barcodes or a qr codes or rfid and all this information is automatically streamlined streamed to the back end the moment an order is placed by the customer the operator knows or the or the warehouse delivery people will know where to fetch this item from and uh, if there are drones and if there are robots these robots are deployed to that location automatically they pick up these items they put them in a proper packaging uh, packages and then they uh, release it for the delivery process and this level of automations are achieved by using a rfid qr code and a, a barcode technologies we might think barcode is in existence for 20 or 30 years now but still barcodes are extensively being adopted and used by many industries from medium and uh, bigger industries they go for either rfid or a barcode uh, options for many of the warehouse applications asset tracking applications for example the assets many of the assets could be a metallic assets or non metallic assets and there are rfids that uh, focus uh, one set of uh, RFIDs work on metallic assets, one category of RFIDs works on non-metallic assets, which means for any asset tracking, we have the RFIDs and barcodes. So depending on the usage, so we uh, 
use one of these uh, classifications of these RFIDs as the barcodes. And uh, some of the uh, future industry requirements would be like uh, the first and foremost requirement is not my business model or the profit or the budgets, all that. What I essentially look at, look at is would the customer be happy if I provide this service to the customer? And that is the driving factor, uh, 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 which is the crux of any organization, the future industries. The industries are not looking only at the profit based models because only profit based models may not sustain in the long run because of the high. Uh, uh, high level of competition in the market, a huge amount of competitors already out there. So how do I make a differentiation to the uh, uh, to the uh, to my profits and to my business models? It is a strong customer centricity, which means I need to be very very agile enough to understand what the customer needs are, adapt myself to the uh, to the evolving requirements, and then change my business models. I don't just look at the current profits alone. I look at a long term connectivity with the customers. So, which means I need to be agile enough. You might have heard the uh, agile uh, agile process, uh, the quality process uh, incorporated in the software uh, industries. Many of them talk about uh, the agile processes. So, something similar to this, the business is also adopting the standards, uh, the agile standards, where they'll be like a, a, a iterative and incremental in nature. Rather, we wait for three months or six months to, for the business to evolve. We only look at uh, maybe like a three days or six days before we make any correction. So then and there, the system or the process gets corrected. Our uh, our entire businesses become very very matured and uh, uh, very faster uh, uh, delivered to the customer also. And the production processes are becoming much more efficient because they're all streamlined in terms of uh, digitization. The every information is captured from the process and from the equipment. And uh, so the moment we see all this data in real time, we don't have to wait for weeks together to consolidate the data. The moment data comes, the next second you convert all this raw data into a reports and dashboard by which I understand what my trends and patterns in the real time in the past historic, uh, um, historic. I mean in the past what has actually happened. So I make very quick decisions in terms of uh, optimizing my uh, business resources. So efficiency is one factor that industries are looking at it by the, using this uh, automation or industry for. And innovation is uh, happening in every application. Even in a simple example, say for example, attendance application, which a small micro enterprise also use, they have a barcode uh, biometric attendance or RFID based attendance. They also look at innovation. They are not just bothered about the attendance hours of an employee. They are also looking at the productivity of an employee. As an employee, I might be there within the company for eight hours or nine hours, whatever has been scheduled for me. But what is my actual productivity? I might be productive only 30% or 40%. So would that be enough if I just go by the attendance? There is far more details that are required to enhance my organization level productivity for which the innovation plays a very, very key role even in micro enterprises. So a lot of new marketing and business models are evolving in terms of pricing models. Pricing models also are undergoing a lot of changes. A lot of service oriented or, or um, subscription based pricing models are evolving. I do not want to sell my equipment as a one-time cost. What I'd rather do is uh, you buy the equipment as a, on a subscription basis. What is 10,000 rupees device? If I want to reach out to a, to a bigger market, I'd rather divide it into like a thousand rupees or 500 rupees every month, spread it across to one, one or two years. So these sort of models are actually becoming very, very popular. Even the cars have become like that. You don't necessarily have to own a 15 lakhs or 20 lakhs car. You can go on a subscription model where every month I pay like a 20,000, 30,000. If I don't need the services of a car for that particular month, I can return back the cars. Even in India, the models are evolving. Only a service provider has already started working on this model in Tamil Nadu also. So these are the service model, service based models which are going to you are going to find in every aspect of your uh, uh, industry or business life. So typical industry life cycle takes from right from development to commissioning to recommissioning. This is what the typical industry life cycle is. We need to capture information at every stage, like right from the bootstrapping to the maintenance phase. We need to capture information as to we need to understand how much time the commissioning time has come. How do I optimize the services? How do I during my operational process? How long did my equipment survive without having to go in for maintenance? This opens out a lot of information as to the quality of this particular machine, quality of this supplier, we get to understand, and the quality of my operations, I, I get to understand. 
So I understand how much time it has taken uh, for a machine to get commissioned in my office. So what are the typical challenges in my operational uh, uh, operational aspect? Say if my machine is operating only in, uh, at 80% or 70% uh, efficiency after three or six months, my overall productivity decline is because of this operational deficiency. So unless I quantify this data, I will not be able to understand that my productivity decline is because of this uh, operational machine, machine uh, not performing well. So I'd rather put it at it, my process is not well, my human resources are not working well. This is what I presume, but actually, if you look at it deeper, uh, deeply, we see that the machines are not operating at its, uh, uh, at its stipulated operational metrics. So these are the information that needs to be captured uh, for, to understand the insights into the business and subsequently the maintenance phase. If we can go in for predictive maintenance, we get to understand, okay, now my next in couple of weeks, my, my machine needs to go for maintenance. So I plan a prior before even the two weeks come in. So I will talk to my suppliers. I uh, streamline everything. So the two weeks uh, uh, later it comes, then immediately I'll call the people will be in place. The spares will be in place. So everything is automated so that people come, people resolve the problem, people uh, service the equipment very quickly and then they recommission it and these are the process that are going to be looked by all the manufacturing and production industries in the future every process gets quantified so by using the quantified data we see a lot of optimization uh, gets uh, happening in the shop flow some of the features that we'd be you'll be you'll be hearing a lot from industries uh, are that how do i convert a brownfield machine into a greenfield machine by retrofitting my embedded intelligence onto the system, secure cloud hosting, the wireless technologies. See, many a places you see that if wires are being used, there'll be a lot of wires dangling across, which which is a threat actually to the operation of your business also. Because if the wire gets cut, we may not to find out the root cause of the problem itself would take some time. So now most of the wire technologies are being replaced by a wireless technologies. And alerts get generated. I don't need to be looking at my uh, dashboards and reports all the time. The moment something goes be, uh, beyond certain thresholds, the alerts get generated. I get an SMS. So I get an SMS. I see, okay, there is a problem with one of the machines. There is a problem with people not coming uh, uh, on time. So these are some of the issues that I get as alerts to my mobile device. So immediately I take corrective measures very fastly. And all the information gets consolidated in terms of reports and dashboards. We will see a lot of not just static reports and static dashboards, but these reports will be dynamic in nature, which means I will be able to configure my reports dynamically according to my present requirements. Many companies might already have a certain templates in terms of reports and dashboards, but these reports could be a standard templates which they've been using for years together. But a lot of insights would be missed out uh, with this. Uh, traditional reports. So what future applications will be looking at dynamic reports? So for example, I want to look at a particular combination of data that would give me more insight. I don't need to go, go to the developer or developer companies again to get this data. The report should have intelligence enough so that they should be reconfigurable to whatever sort of our, uh, data that I'm looking at. So most of the future uh, uh, applications, the user reports, it could use a business intelligence platforms or a BI platforms, or it could also could use a customized development using analytic tools. And it is going to be like a centralized platform, one single platform, one enterprise application for an industry. They look at the connecting the complete enterprise and manufacturing systems onto one single umbrella. So data seamlessly get uh, transferred from one application to the other application, which gives a lot of insights. Instead of me buying four different applications from four different vendors, which is a huge challenge for me if I want to take data from one application and move it to the other application. A lot of challenges are there in terms of interfaces. Instead, if there is one service provider who can provide all the complete business application requirements under one single umbrella, it can provide me with a lot of insights in a very, very similar manner. In a flash of seconds, I can uh, keep moving from one application to other application. So these are some of the features that we'd be looking at uh, all future industry automation uh, uh, platforms. So some of the applications that challenges, this is a typical IoT platform what is uh, used by the industries and we have deployed uh, in uh, global industries as well this structure. It is a layered structure. We see at the bottom, we see the physical devices. It could be a centrifuge, it could be a 
furnace, temperature furnace, it could be an extrusion machine, grinding machine, CMC, any machine. So bringing intelligence to the machine is that you impart sensor. The moment anybody talks about intelligence at the physical devices level, the first and foremost thing what they imply by that is the sensors. The sensors only converts the physical information into a virtual information or electrical information. So one of these sensors, like a, it could be a temperature, vibration, uh, humidity, any, any sensor gets connected to the equipment. So once the sensors are connected, then there will be an embedded intelligence along with the sensors, which converts either the analog or discrete data into a digital sample, stores them in a embedded devices within a local servers and stream them to a cloud server. So once the data is acquired by the cloud server, then it does the complete processing, the data acquisition, data processing it does, and then it streams that process data to either the delivery engine, which could be a web and mobile applications, or it could be an alerts that can be sent via a mobile app or email or SMS. It could be a uh, analytic engine, which could be like a predictive analytics. It could be a predictive analytics. It could be a dynamic reports. It could be an intelligent dashboards. So it streams the data from this layer, from the cloud layer to the insights layer, and also the automation layer. Suppose if I want to um, blow a, a hooter, suppose the measurements go uh, go beyond the threshold, then I want to sound a hooter. Then this automation will engine will analyze that particular data going beyond a certain threshold. Then it alerts the users in the shop floor, or it could be a web application also. And a lot of visualization techniques will be used the moment alerts happen. Because what we'd also be interested in is the post-processing of all this data. I want to understand in the past three months how my system has performed within overall. So I want to understand in terms of trends and patterns that has that have evolved over the period of time. So the scheduler stores the data in the servers in the local server, which could be within the premises of the organization, or it could be in the cloud server. So these are some of the typical layered architectures which are being used by the industries across and the OE is one of the critical parameters which gets monitored uh, by the industries overall equipment efficiency i have machines suppose say for example in a man typical manufacturing plant i might have hundreds of machines running what is the overall efficiency of my equipment would this uh, operational efficiency is impacting my productivity how do i understand this uh, uh, operational efficiency of my equipment to the overall productivity of my business because my business is not just the equipment alone it has the process it has the humans it has a supply chain it has a various elements connected so i am linking this manufacturing plant information or the shop floor information with the rest of my business processes to understand deeper aspects of my businesses so the uh, first and uh, first requirement would be like a uh, plug in the sensors get the data data ingestion happens now by virtue of having a sensors, embedded technologies, and the wireless technologies, data gets ingested from the physical devices to the virtual servers. From where I understand the patterns using a various color coding, using a various types of charts. It could be a bar chart, it could be a histograms, it could be any type of a chart, pie charts. So understand what is actually happened to the devices. And then I also do a long-term data analytics. If there are any prior models that I need to fix onto this uh, data, uh, from the data then i also map this data to the data that is stored and then i derive the business intelligence from this uh, models and also for me to predict what, what is likely to happen for this particular machine maybe tomorrow or maybe next week or next month i also do a predictive modeling for predictive modeling we use the ai algorithms it could be a machine learning it could be a uh, deep learning algorithms are extensively being used and you see that every embedded system now see earlier days people used to uh, bother get bothered about whether the machine learning algorithms can be used on the hardware but now with a very powerful processes uh, embedded processes in place so many of the embedded systems or embedded boards have also have the uh, uh, machine learning algorithms so the data ingestion happens within the hardware data gets analyzed within the hardware and then the analyzed data only is then to the server for the second level analysis, which means instead of viewing the, the entire system from a more centralized manner, we also look at it from the decentralized manner, where the data distribution happens across both the hardware and the software. So finally, the predictive models tells us about what is likely to happen in the future. 
So some of the examples like uh, in the inventory management, what uh, uh, what uh, small and medium enterprises look at is using the RFID tags and uh, barcodes or uh, QR codes. How do I how do I build an entire system, the ERP system that can track my inventory, that can predict my inventory is going below a certain uh, threshold of stock, and then I need to place uh, in a very proactive manner to the suppliers uh, to replay to uh, to uh, add inventory items. So if you look at it, it's not just manual process, but the entire process is highly automated. The moment RFID or barcodes are fixed to my assets or inventory, if the inventory items are moved from one location to other location, we get informed. OK, this particular asset item or inventory item has moved from location X to location Y. My inventory items in my stores have gone below, below a certain threshold. Now the purchase orders have to be raised to a particular uh, supplier. So this process, again, is automated. So we look at an architecture. It is not a manual processes, but overall architecture that is the key to the success of any automation. So the physical devices onwards to the complete processes uh, is uh, automated using an architecture where the hardware, hardware elements, software elements, network elements uh, get integrated in a more seamless manner. The energy management for one of the uh, one of the industries, uh, top industry. Uh, we were implemented the uh, energy management. So the, st the energy meters could be like uh, age old energy meters, like uh, 10 years back, I might have bought an energy meter, or it could be a new energy meter, which provides me information in digital format. So how do I uh, bring it to a common platform, all these uh, different energy meter measurements? And then I streamed because energy measurements can be at a very remote place. So how do I get all these measurements onto a platform where I can process them and then stream them to the cloud server using a wireless transceiver platforms. So once this data are acquired by this uh, energy trans uh, wireless transceiver platforms, data are stored, data are processed, and then they are streamed to the web and mobile application. So this will have a lot of practical challenges in terms of if the meters come from a different suppliers, they come with a different interfaces, and the types of distances uh, that we are looking at to stream this real-time data, there are a lot of practical aspects that need to be understood. One is theoretical analysis. Okay, theoretically, the system works like this. But there also could be a lot of practical limitations when we adopt a certain technology to an operating environment. So these are some of the important challenges that we'd be facing when we get into automation. Gas leak detection, for example, the pipes might already be in place in the bigger industries. So now how do I understand? On an average, there'd always be like a 10 to 40% of leaks happening in every industry. And the major productivity, the businesses lose their productivity because of the leaks. It could be a gas leak, it could be an air leak, it could be a water leak. So how do I first understand that there is a leak? What is the quantum of leak and how do I fix this leak? Only when I understand that there is a leak, then I can fix the leak. So quantifying these leaks also become very important. At the same time, I cannot go on using a sophisticated technology for want of the uh, costing as well. There's got to be a very low cost, very efficient, which also gives me a more insights into the operations of my plan. So these are some of the requirements which uh, uh, repeatedly keep coming from bigger industries. And uh, once we understand for uh, one type of leak detection, for example, gas leak, I understood how to solve a particular problem. Then it becomes very easy for me to understand uh, how to solve an air leak problem and water leak problem. And how do I efficiently transfer the data to the backend? There are protocols like a MQTT protocol, which are highly efficient for low bandwidth applications. We need not always go with the HTTP protocols, which is a very high weight uh, protocol. We can also get uh, go with a very, very optimal protocol like a MQTT or a, a constraint application protocols. Water flow monitoring. You can look at one of the plans that we worked with. It's uh, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the top companies in India. We worked with them. So how do there were leaks because of which their productivity was uh, going bad in terms of this plant operations by about 40 to 50 percent. A small leak happens, but the pinpointing that location and taking a corrective measures is the challenge they had. And they cannot go. There are manual water leak detectors by which you can also use it, but the process is not efficient. So how do you bring in technology and very cost effective technology? Because it's not at one place I'm going to put this water leak sensors. It's got to be in a more distributed manner. So which means my cost needs to be uh, cost needs to be optimized and also need to understand the operational environment because many a places I cannot run the wires from here to my uh, computing devices. Even if I want to run a wireless devices, there are a lot of uh, 
uh, challenges in terms of the multipath likewise because my signals may not be able to bend across the wall which means i need to understand the operating environment as well it is not uh, just enough if i understand the architecture i also need to understand the physical environments in which we are operating and this is one of the prerequisites of the industry for automation one is the technology we understand second is the problem statement we understand third is the problem environment we need to understand only when we understand all these three then we can provide an effective solution to the customer otherwise it becomes more like an ad hoc solutions like a data from all these processing elements it could be from energy it could be from air water any physical medium are sent to the big data processor where data gets stored data get mined then it gets processed and one of the bigger challenges is suppose if i have about 300 to 400 sensors mounted in my plant it becomes like a high speed and high volume data every one second i'll be getting a data from one sensor and i'm looking at closer to like 300 to 400 sensors 400 devices so it becomes like a high volume and high speed data that needs to be processed by the uh, by the back end server one is that the processing of the data the back end the second is how do we effectively stream all this data using a highly efficient communication technology so this is again another bottleneck we need to understand the app technology for some applications even 3g would suffice for some applications 4g for some applications 5g but depending on what technology we use the cost also changes so we need to be sensitive towards the cost as well. What technology incurs what cost, we also need to have an approximate idea. Only then we'll be able to finalize on the technology that we'll be using for a particular uh, solution. And uh, all said and done, there are still a lot of issues that need to be addressed in terms of device processing. Is my device able to do this level of processing that are required for this particular problem? If three devices are going to get connected, to my already established embedded system, would my embedded system be able to process this data? Perhaps not. Then we may have to look at uh, uh, adopting a different strategy. Would my protocol be sufficient enough to use for this amount of data? Uh, the HTTP protocol, for example, it might be okay for low volume of data, but it might not be adequate for high streaming data. So need to understand such challenges involved in terms of data bandwidth requirements. And what is the storage? Because if the network, one of the biggest challenges in any connected network connected systems is that if the network fails, what happens to your data that is getting streamed? So which means I need to have a backup in my embedded system itself, which keeps storing the data in terms of uh, network failures. And once the network comes back, then we have to restore all the stored data to the server, which means my system should have a decent memory because any time your network could fail, it can fail for uh, it can be failed for two hours to four hours even for eight hours which means i have to consider all this all this before i design my system low battery life say for example if a battery fails which is uh, uh, in an equipment which is placed in a very remote place then i will not get any data from the equipment i do not even know what is happening is my system functioning not functioning it adds a lot of cost in terms of deploying a, a, a human resource to that particular place so need to ensure that what is the life of the battery how long it will sustain what is the bandwidth that I need to, uh, I can send to consume my battery power? All these factors we need to understand. The bit rate, the computational power of your embedded devices, all this becomes very critical design challenges that we need to address when we make an efficient uh, uh, solution for the customer. There also could be a technological uh, challenges in terms of, suppose I have designed a system today for 100 users. Tomorrow, suddenly the company asked me to uh, increase the scalability to about uh, 500 users. If I were to redesign the entire system, then your original design has failed because you've not considered the factors, the scalability, security, trust, privacy, you've not considered in the first place. The architecture plays a very, very key role. We have to design the systems in a very modular manner and a scalable manner uh, in such a way that tomorrow, if there is a requirement to increase the number of devices or the number of users, my system should be able to scale up. Conversely, tomorrow, if my system needs to be scaled down because I'm scaling down my operations without any change in your coding or in your physical devices, you should be able to scale down very effectively. Also, the security also has to be very dynamic. A lot of testing has to be done right from a physical devices because at any level, your device can be hacked. It can be a physical device which can be hacked. It, it could be a web application, mobile application which could be hacked. It could be a server which could be hacked. So we need to ensure that the system is uh, completely secured and uh, very safe. 
and also a lot of uh, standards we need to understand because we are looking at heterogeneous systems the heterogeneous system might comprise a mechanical elements or a embedded or a wireless or wired communication technology the back end server technologies so uh, they have to be developed in a more keeping in mind the heterogeneous evolving nature of the future requirements we have to keep them in mind when we develop such systems so some of the important challenges in terms of the entire uh, the macro level perspective of the business of future industries is that the trust the privacy and the security or the hackings they are the they, these parameters all the six parameters are key to the success of any industry automation solution for example i need to have the authentication access control when i log into a web or mobile application i need to be ensure that only uh, authenticated people are given access to my uh, machines or the services or the processors nobody else should be given access and this system should be hack proof there should be attack resistance the privacy of the data should be ensured the identity of the user should be ensured before they are given access so all this should be part of the architecture when we develop a system so one side it is in uh, solution what we look at the core solution what we are targeting the second is the wrappers around this uh, functions are very very important uh, to the success of your business so some of the architectures are which you can uh, uh, which you can uh, uh, see in many of the literatures or many of the adoptions are like it could be a three layered architecture or a five layered architecture some of the layers are like a physical layer the data and the network or processing layer and the application layer application layer is the one that is given to the end user the user could be a end b2c customer or it could be a b2b uh, user the uh, physical the perception layer is more about the physical devices that gets attached to the physical equipment or the physical world and the network layer is the one that processes the data that transports the data to the back end so it can be categorized as a three layered five layered or seven layered but this is more standardized like a, something like a osa layer seven layered layer these are also standard architectures available so industries adopt the standard practices because by which we can abstract each of the layers and we can build very very efficient systems and uh, we see that the uh, the uh, this is a more of a fog computing that distributed computing it is not that the future applications will look at computing at only one end the back end of the cloud server they also will be doing a lot of competition at the at the sensors or the hardware level itself before they are taking taken to the cloud and this is called as a fog computing this is also called as a decentralized architecture where now the centralized systems earlier now they get decentralized this decentralized system make their first level decisions even before you transfer the data to the server and this is called as a fog computing or the fog servers a detail i mean a little more break up of the entire uh, the five layer architecture the perception so what exactly is done a lot of sensors gets connected it can, um, it can be a chemical sensors it could be a healthcare sensors agriculture sensors industry sensors there could be a humongous amount of sensors it could even be a mobile phone sensors and the pre processing uh, and the wireless or like a transport layer the communication technologies the middleware and the final application layer so this is how the typical breakup is so when we design a system these are the architectures that we have to keep in mind when we design the system say for example when i de develop a middleware i need to understand how do i make it make them in a more modular manner so that my system uh, implementation becomes a uh, highly efficient the authentication authorization and encryption these are three different modules so i can give it to different resources for the development so as far as the encryption developers are concerned they will only understand what is the input to my encryption module what is the output from the encryption module the authorization team will understand what is the input what is the output so this is the this is what is called as a microservices understanding the microservices is the key to the success of all future uh, internet of things or industry for applications some of the protocols and standards the mqtt which is a more most popular one mqtt we also have xmpp constraint application protocols uh, which are standardized by ieee itu and ietf many embedded platforms very low cost embedded platforms they get integrated with the machinery when we talk about robotics when we talk about robotics for machines you see that a lot of applications use some of these embedded boards which have a lot of intelligence for example raspberry pi is one of the 
more pop, most popular boards amongst all this Arduino and uh, Raspberry Pi. So they have the processes is very very powerful. They have a lot of interfaces, which means I can connect to even like a 30, 40 machines to one simple 3,000 rupees board. Even we have boards as low as 700 to 800 rupees, which are primarily configured for industry applications. So the costs are increasingly going down. The power of these devices are going up. A lot of intelligence. We can also incorporate a machine learning algorithm within the Raspberry Pi. Some of the analytic platforms. It could be an open source platform, which is free of cost. It could be a paid license like a business intelligence of one of these tools which can be used or we can write our own python algorithms or our algorithm which we can integrate to our system to develop more customized intelligence rather going with the third party tools so there are several ways by which you can impart this intelligence into the system that purely depends on what we are actually looking at it and embedded operating systems so some of the evolution of architectures in terms of indices are that Earlier, the, the, the data used to get transferred from the devices to the edge communication device, which does all the data processing and platform, then it is sent to the uh, web or mobile application. This is a cloud server, this is an embedded intelligence, this is a sensor. Now the architecture has changed over the past five years or so, the architecture has changed where there is no explicit requirement of your communication system. The sensors themselves come with the wireless and uh, wireless communication technology which stream the data directly to the cloud server this is uh, this is how the architecture has evolved and now recently we see that a small server is within the devices only so the devices can even communicate direct, uh, directly to the app so for example i have uh, about hundreds of people working in uh, working in my industry i don't necessarily need to transfer all the data to the server from the server again to the user the data can directly be streamed to the mobile application or web application also so this is what is actually evolving now, wherein I don't need to shell out money for the cloud server. I'll only have a small local server, which can be used for my industry specific applications. So what is the essence of AI is what we are going to see here in this section. It is all about sensing is one thing. The physical world, the first and foremost requirement for any automation is I need to sense the physical world. Having done that, the next is how do I impart my intelligence to my physical devices so that before even sending the data to the backend, I make a first level intelligence here itself. I process the data at my physical layer itself. Then I send the data to my cloud. So this way I consume my bandwidth. I incur lesser expenses compared to earlier days where every raw data will be sent to the cloud. And this is where the AI comes into picture. AI or machine learning or deep learning. They are embedded within my hardware itself. So which means the physical sensors are connected to, to my embedded intelligence board boards, which runs the machine learning or AI algorithms, which decides whether to send this data to the server or not. So once the data is sent to the backend, the data are stored, the data are mined, and then data are processed before they are shared to the web and mobile applications. So we see that IoT and AI are going to be interwoven for all future applications. When I talk about IoT, I am not. Uh, isolating AI also. AI is an integral element of my industry four. When I talk about IoT, I also uh, imply that AI, data analytics, big data are integrated uh, within, within my IoT. Every smart manufacturing, when we talk about it, it could be a smart machinery, smart equipment, smart process. We increasingly talk about the integration of AI and IoT, which will enable the uh, management or the uh, users to derive intelligence from all these uh, physical devices and processes. So AI is something like a, how our rational mind thinks. It's more about a cognitive thinking brought onto the machines. If I need to write a small program, it could be a C program, C++ or a Python program, it is all defined by a set of rules. It is a fixed set of rules. But as a human, we, we see that our our uh, our decision making depends on what in what environment we perceive at that instant of time the same environment some one hour before we might have perceived in a different manner and then we might have taken different decisions now the environment might have undergone a small change but this change if they are defined by fixed rules in my mind then i'll be taking a fixed decisions which may not be optimal for my entire operations so AI is something like how humans think the systems also think in a more rational manner where there are no fixed thresholds. 
they're all dynamic thresholds based on the ambience based on the environment or operational environment which i'm working with this is what ai systems are about how machines can think more intelligently in a more rational and cognitive manner the benefit of this is the operating cost goes down the complexity of the applications increases definitely is increased because we need to understand the ai and we also need to understand the ai when integrated with iot how the results are achieved so there is a little bit of complexity increase but at the same time you see that operational efficiency of my overall plant increases substantially the return on investment is going to be extremely high and uh, this is what is being adopted by every industry and even the suppliers are working such a very intelligent systems when we buy a sensor now a temperature sensor for example they are far more intelligent than a sensor which we bought about 3 or 4 years before so ai is primarily about we talk about a deep learning machine learning predictive analytics nlp natural language processing and the robotics and the vision so th these are the keywords or the buzzwords that we will be increasingly talking about so each works with each suppose i talk about nlp or deep learning they have a distinct properties i cannot use my nlp very efficiently for my deep learning requirements i cannot use my nlp effectively for my image and uh, vision applications nlp is primarily meant for speech processing how do i classify my speeches how do i classify my audio systems likewise my vision applications are not best suited for deep learning algorithms so we we need to be we need to understand each of the distinct elements of this ai only then will be able to adopt an appropriate algorithms or appropriate technology for a particular uh, uh, requirement so this is how the ai is going to evolve and we see now there is a lot of assisted intelligence which means i get the data then based on the data i get i derive some intelligence next there is a little bit of manual effort in this next to maybe like a couple of years you see is an augmented intelligence where the iot devices and ai gets integrated or uh, tightly interlinked where the system takes an input raw data and throws out the output but the decision making will still be done by the humans it could be a management or at uh, different types of users they, they they take a decisions and maybe in 3 4 years already we are witnessing in the smart car applications with driverless application driverless cars all that autonomous intelligence which means the input is sensed automatically by my sensors the output in terms of the smart car we provide the uh, steering information to the uh, uh, to the vehicle automatically without having to have any human intervention this is an autonomous intelligence which we are already witnessing and we are will increasingly we will see this in the future uh, even the smart home applications and distributed collaborative intelligence is there could be heterogeneous systems there could be a smart home system there could be a smart industry system so how do i integrate both of them so that my performance across my heterogeneous uh, activities could be uh, uh, could be more effective this is what the distributed collaborative intelligence talks about some of the key ai technologies uh, for 2025 you look at it deep learning is going to be is going to penetrate most of our industry system the computing power requirements are coming down by the day because many efficient algorithms are getting implemented and uh, you see machine learning will be a de facto requirement in any every embedded system before you transfer the data there is there are going to be machine learning algorithms some algorithms like machine learning algorithms that can run very effectively on a hard embedded systems so this is a classification done by uh, not just one source but several sources have pointed out but the key here is ai and iot devices are going to be extensively integrated in all future applications in all industry four needs so some of the frameworks it is actually the machine learning can be implemented on a lot of open source platforms like r and python so uh, they are very very powerful platforms the advantage of these platforms is they can also get they can also integrate very efficiently with your web mobile applications and your hardware platforms as well so which means i don't necessarily need to look at a post processing in a virtual environment i can also integrate them in a real time applications they are in python so there are a lot of libraries like keras tensorflow are provided in python which can help us build a customized analytic applications or customized ai applications because sometimes going for third party business intelligence applications might be a cost prohibitive also for us and also learning that tool and also it could be a heavyweight application which may not suit my real time needs 
so we also can develop algorithms very effectively and so i'll skip this ai algorithms this, some of the basics i mean i'll not dwell too deeper into this perceptron is one of the basic models of the uh, ai uh, for example how do i use this ai in a motor example now the problem statement to me is i i have a motor with me which has a recurring problems i need to say for example tomorrow i need to switch on this motor and expect the motor to run 90% i need to be ensure that this motor will function properly so now how do i go about deciding whether to use this motor or not so the deciding factors could be is the application tomorrow very important to me so tomorrow's application i need to deliver to the customer 100% if i decide then the application becomes important then if the motor has any problem i need to have a trained technician readily available to me because this is my only motor available with me so do i have a uh, trained technician with me is the technician available in the shop floor or does he come in the particular shift so these are the deciding factors for this particular problem statement so how do i build a model now so some uh, binary hypothesis so by uh, providing the binary hypothesis i give a certain weights to this individual models like a w1 is when the application is important this is trained technician is important and uh, technician availability is important so based on this weights then i give importance to these three criteria if i give a, a high uh, uh, more weightage to the trained technician then i'll increase my weight here so accordingly my decision making by the ai algorithms will change and this is how the typically we program the uh, ai or machine learning algorithms uh, this is how the architecture looks like there is input layer there is a hidden layer so more number of layers are added to impart a high level of intelligence to the solution if there is the input also can be connected to the output directly but the intelligence will be limited the more and more layers we add we see a high level of intelligence that can be extracted from the systems this is a two layer hidden layer network and deep learning is something like this the moment we go in a more systematic manner we see that the increase we see a lot of intelligence can be derived by these algorithms very very effectively and uh, what we talk about iot can also be implemented using a digital domain using a digital filters almost whatever you get using a ai we also can get through the other uh, uh, other platforms like one is using a digital filter method or it could be a statistical processing or it could be a control engineering algorithms like a kalman filter which means is not just we need to essentially work on the ai alone but the same intelligence we also can dynamically bring out from other technologies so depending on what we are conversant if we come from the control system background we can go efficiently with the dynamic kalman filters or adaptive kalman filters with a lot of intelligence if we come from a communication or electronic background we also can develop a, a very a highly efficient adaptive digital uh, uh, digital filters if we come from a computer science background we can use a machine learning or uh, ai learning the results still i mean could be the same Uh, only thing is depending on from what background we come and what platforms you are using because we tend to use more on computer applications now the people are inclined to move towards the ai algorithms but essentially it can the, the solutions can also be implemented in any of the domains so uh, we are uh, the market is looking at energy management workforce asset equipment production fleet there are several applications there is no depth of applications it could be agriculture healthcare retail supply chain production manufacturing any type of industries are looking at industry automations industry automation is they are looking at industry for will i be able to monitor and control the information or control my devices using a simple mobile or web application this is what industries are looking at some of the iot technologies the future technologies are 5g augmented reality digital twin blockchain neuromorphic hardware and the edge and deep cloud devices and for industry automation we are looking at a business of about 7 trillion market in, in the next 3 or 4 years that is a tremendous power of this industry automation 7 trillion dollar business it is uh, increasing by the day because lot of industry verticals are coming onto its fold and the manufacturing is uh, uh, is uh, being witnessed in a different light altogether in terms of the manufacturing process itself is uh, coming under a service model manufacturing under a service model if i if i have a requirement i'll rent out your premises i'll make use of your infrastructure i get my output 
I can block your infrastructure maybe a one month, two months, or whatever my needs are. This way, the assistants are becoming highly efficient, highly uh, business wise. Also, it makes more sense. Adapting to that is going to take time. The service based model, but we see a gravity towards the uh, industry is moving towards that. And to conclude this session, the future belongs to technologies unless we are conversant with technology. Technology is also what we mean is a heterogeneous understanding of all the technologies. I might have come from a mechanical background. Nevertheless, I need to understand what a software is about, what software, web and mobile application, at least at a high level, I need to understand what the electronic or wireless technologies, what embedded systems are about. I need to have a fair amount of understanding unless um, otherwise it becomes a huge challenge for me to adapt to the future industry needs. I might come from a computer science background. If I do not understand what my machine is actually doing, what sort of data it is pushing to the back end, I may not be able to develop an efficient algorithms. So I need to have a fair amount of understanding. So which means that the future is looking at heterogeneous systems and heterogeneous skills, which are very, very important to adapt ourselves to all the uh, future requirements. Digital is going to be the keyword. Some of the buzzwords what we'll be hearing is IoT, industry for big data, AI, or some of the keywords we'd be hearing in all the industries. So it's as we might as well understand at a macro level, if it doesn't, if these skills doesn't do not correspond to our uh, respective disciplines, we need to at least be skillful at least a macro level in all the other required disciplines for the future requirements. So with this, I'd like to thank all of you for giving me an opportunity to share uh, my views on what industry for is about. I thank uh, uh, CIT for giving me an opportunity and AACT for facilitating this uh, FTP workshop. Thank you very much uh, and look forward to a bigger uh, participation and collaboration during this event. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for your wonderful lecture. And uh, we have, uh, I hope this might have enhanced the knowledge of uh, uh, researchers and all the uh, people in uh, IoT and artificial intelligence, and which is one of the uh, area which, which is going to rule the world for some times and the participants those who are willing to ask the questions can post your questions in the chat box sure yeah if you raise your hands i will be allowing you to uh, ask a question with the expert in the live session so now uh, i hope uh, miss kasturi has raised your hand i am allowing you to Ask 